so, uh, it's been a little while. Um, I didn't mean to just completely fall off the radar over the summer, but I felt like around the time that I released part four of my COVID-19 diary series, I was starting to fall into a bit of a rut with my content. Because as far as the style of videos I was doing, everything started to feel the same. It's like I would write a script, I would shoot it, I would edit it, and there was very little variation as far as what I was making, how I was making it, and even though that video is, in my mind, the best video I've made so far, there was just this inkling sense that I was presenting the information rather than presenting myself, and my priorities as far as the kind of creator I wanted to be, the kind of messages I wanted to get out to people, I felt like certain things weren't quite in the right place. And I'm really grateful for one of my friends who pointed out that a lot of my content felt really serious. And they were like, you know, Alice, you're not really a serious person. And I was like, yeah, you're right, I know. Um, so I made the decision to take a few months off and not think about YouTube. Uh, to just be present in life, to really grow as a person, to seek out all sorts of new experiences, and just live. And I'm really, really grateful I made the decision to do so because I feel like over the past few months, I have grown so tremendously as a person. I've worked through so many mental health uh, and trauma-related struggles. I've fallen into an incredible relationship. And I realized that I felt like there were certain events in the news that had to be talked about in order for me to stay relevant. But what I was doing was I was distracting myself from the actual mission of my channel. Whenever I first started this back in January, I remember saying, I want to talk about things that are important to me. I want to cover topics that, even if it isn't necessarily related to like leftist politics, if I still feel it has a purpose and it's important to say something about it, I still want to do that. And I got too caught up in feeling like there was one type of content I had to cover and I ended up losing a lot of love for the process. And I thought, you know, I love being a creator and I don't want to lose something that is so near and dear to my heart. So I made the difficult decision to step back for a few months. And what I experienced is something that I think creators and activists of every single stripe are going to experience at one point or another, burnout. You know, the nature of content creation, being an artist, putting your boots to the ground day in and day out, doing anything that requires you pouring all of yourself into it, leads itself to an inevitable burning out. And it's going to happen to all of us because none of us have the spoons to be at 100% 24-7. But an important thing to consider when it happens is, number one, how will you react? And number two, what lessons are you going to take from that experience? Feeling as if you're hitting a dead end, feeling a lack of inspiration or excitement over the work you're doing, or even deciding you want to completely rebrand and step in a new direction as I've done with this channel. All of these are just indications that you care deeply about your own work, that you're deeply in tune with yourself as a person, and you recognize when it's time to hit pause step back and change course. That's a perfectly normal human response and I hope you never feel as if there's something wrong with you because the spark you once had is no longer there. That's a perfectly normal human response, honey. Mental and physical health struggles, stressful life circumstances, and all kinds of external stimuli can add to that feeling of exhaustion and lack of inspiration. And I think everyone should take a break when they feel they need to. Your well-being above all else is the most important thing. And you should never ever feel guilty for wanting to look after yourself. Although speaking of how well any one of us are holding together, um, let's dig into the biggest reason why I decided to make this video and talk about our experience living through the year from hell. Like, Jesus Christ, y'all. I feel like I accidentally jinxed us uh, back before the pandemic started whenever I said, I mean, it's not that bad. How much worse could it possibly get? That was a bad idea. 
It really feels like everything that could go wrong has gone wrong, and we've seen one society-shaking event after another in rapid succession, and there was no way for us to really recover or even find something to hold on to as all of this is happening. Like, looking back to the beginning of the year whenever I first launched my channel, I had absolutely no idea how much my life would change because of it, how many incredible people would be brought into my life through it, but also how harrowing 2020 would become in just a few short weeks. When the pandemic began, I know we were all in a state of shock. Like, seeing things shut down, hearing the projected numbers of deaths and infections, it just, it all felt so surreal. And I know I'm not the only one who is thinking, okay, this cannot be real. This feels like something that is so enormous and so scary, and we are so completely helpless to it. And it's fascinating thinking back of how terrifying it was then and realizing how normalized it's become now. Like, how often do any one of you actually consciously remember that you're wearing a mask? It's really weird, right? And even though we're on the cusp of arguably the worst wave of infections and deaths so far, we have made it to this point, which means that regardless of how difficult the next few weeks are going to be, and they're going to be really, really difficult, we have what it takes to keep moving, even if it doesn't feel like we do. I mean, Look at how chaotic and batshit the rest of 2020 has been. Bernie Sanders was pushed out of the race for the presidency yet again, exposing the well-known fact that the Democratic Party is a bunch of corrupt assholes who have always been corrupt assholes and will always be corrupt assholes. In other words, we don't like them and we have absolutely no reason to trust them because all they want to do is dangle the carrot of progressivism in front of our faces in order to step behind our backs and defang us when we're not looking. And they've done exactly that with the George Floyd protests. Heads of the Black Lives Matter movement recently came out in support of President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris and it reminds me of when the Populist Party in the late 1800s was completely absorbed and destroyed by the Democratic Party. It's nothing more than the continuation of a cycle that's been happening since this country was founded. And, you know, it's bad enough that Trump relentlessly sends his hordes of devotees after the radical Antifa mob, and conservative media labels literally every single person and organization that's barely to the left of them as communists and evil. Both parties are united under common goals oppress the people, prevent us from finding self-actualization and self-determination, and strengthening their hold on culture, power, wealth, and us. The nationwide protests over George Floyd and the murder of a left-wing activist proved to me how far our government is willing to go to achieve these goals. I saw with my own eyes the true nature of America's police state and the fact that the line delineating cops from white supremacists isn't clear at all. In fact, there's not really a line there, just uh... <laughs> I mean, Blue Lives Matter is a dog whistle for white supremacy, but whatever. Speaking of white supremacists, oh my god, 2020 has seen a significant rise in antagonism and anti-Semitic language from fascist militias to the point where some of them have adopted the classy moniker of proud goys or brought fellow racist, <coughs> I mean, uh, Patriots out to protest mass voter fraud that's definitely for sure happening and not just a figment of their vivid imaginations. Like, on top of all of this shit, Trump has refused to concede the presidency and is threatening a coup while telling his Proud Boys to stand back and stand by. Wildfires absolutely ravaged my home state of Oregon to the point where the air was toxic and stained a deep orange for weeks on end. Ruth Bader Ginsburg died and Amy Coney Barrett was immediately nominated and confirmed, leading to fears that the Supreme Court will now try to roll back LGBTQ and women's rights and transform America into Gilead. Millions upon millions of Americans have been protesting the mask mandate and refused to comply with the stay-at-home order, causing the infection rate to spike where they live. Evangelicals have gone full mask off 
and scoffed at Biden's whim, claiming that God shall have his way and single-handedly elect Trump as the new ruler of the universe, because I'm sure their God would definitely pick someone who's more like the Antichrist than him to rule his kingdom, but you know, that's not really important. <laughs> Police are still murdering people of color left and right, and it all begins to feel like too much after a while. But, hey, let's take a second. To breathe. Things are really, really scary right now. And that's okay. Right now, you and I are experiencing this together and we'll get through it together. It's easy to feel burnt out and hopeless as if everything you've been doing so far doesn't serve a purpose and is all for naught. But every little thing that you're able to do as an activist, creator, ally, protester, friend, comrade, and supporter, every single bit of it matters. If you don't have the spoons to do the kind of work that others can do, that doesn't mean that you have any less of a place in the grand scheme of things. Something as little as sending someone an article written from a leftist perspective, reading theory, passing knowledge from yourself to others, that's still so, so important and so valuable. And don't ever let anyone tell you that you aren't doing enough because there is no such thing. We, the proletariat, are so much stronger and so much more capable of great things than we've been led to believe by the fascists in office. We have the ability to transform American society to an even greater extent. And every little act of service that you do leaves an impact that cannot be erased. It's okay to take time for yourself in your health because pushing yourself over the edge and working yourself to death are not worth it. If you want to explore different avenues, do it. If you want to join an organization, do it. If you have any desire at all to help others, there is a world of opportunity right out there waiting for you. But most importantly, Give love to yourself and others. Do the best you can with what you have. Tell the haters to go fuck themselves. And be genuine to who you are and who only you can be. We're in this together. You are not alone in this. You are valued, loved, and an essential building block of the society to come. We've got a lot of work to do. You ready?